Welcome back. You're watching the India Development Debate uh, this Friday evening with me, Nantara Rai, in New Delhi. It was six days ago that Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman, as part of her union budget speech, one of the longest in Indian history, talked about a new electronic policy. We at ET now are getting you some exclusive details as far as this policy goes. A scheme aimed at uh, giving a thrust to domestic manufacturing of uh, large-scale electronics. Uh, we're going to get the graphics pointers for you on your screens where you will see that the government is targeting to have over uh, additional 2 lakh jobs, uh, see uh, a big impetus on exports as well, and of course it will have a multiplier impact on the country. It's an incentive scheme of maybe 6 to 8 percent. That's the kind of range that we're talking about. The scheme can... Uh, it will cost around 42,000 crore rupees. It will cost the, govern, the government a revenue of about 3,700 crore rupees. And it's looking at direct tax collections of almost 5,000 crore rupees from this. What's on, us, on the charts? Well, mobiles with invoice value of over $200. You've got domestic mobiles as well as specific electronic components that are all going to be targeted as per this scheme. But let's talk in layman terms. You're going to have an electronic policy, a smart, uh, a, a large-scale electronic policy looking to give an impetus to manufacturing. What is this going to mean for the Apples, the Samsungs, the Xiaomi's of this world? It's a conversation I'm going to take forward now with uh, Pankaj Mohindru, who is joining us uh, this Friday evening right here on the India Development Debate. Good evening, Mr. Mohindru. You know, you understand this space so very well. You engage with the government. In Good fact, evening, you were part of a delegation that also met with the Prime Minister Narendra Modi recently. And I'm guessing that uh, the new electronic policy was uh, on top of the agenda. A lion's share, a lion's share of it seems to be what the government is hoping to get and, and provide an impetus to will be phones which have an invoice value of more than $200. They're going to get a lion's share of this 42,000 crore rupees being planned over five years, almost 80%. Is that a good idea? Uh, yes, I'll give you a little background. You see, from 2015 to 2019, the mobile phone manufacturing has grown about 900%. And uh, we have saturated the domestic market. We are almost producing our entire mobile capacity, uh, domestic consumption now, uh, domestically. So, uh, in uh, October 2018, the Prime Minister made an audacious statement, I should say, that India will be number one in mobile manufacturing globally. So, in the NPE, which is National Policy on Electronics 2019, a target of 190 billion US dollars, which was set, which was, which approximately will be about 14 lakh crores at that time. So, an increase of uh, seven times, so 700 percent from the current 200, uh, 2 lakh crores, which is a growth of about 10 times over the last four years, and another seven times growth. So, this kind of value is only possible if you go for the, uh, you know, the North American markets, the Western European markets, I, I, I'm sure you understand that uh, the Chinese market uh, will probably be not open to us till that time. So this uh, 190 billion, which is 110 billion of export, about uh, 8 lakh crore of export, is only possible with a target on the uh, higher end phones, uh, so to say which has the lion's share uh, of the global value market. But it is not that we are, uh, you know, in the policy, draft policy, ignoring the entire possibility of domestic Indian companies going global. It will be very large volumes and uh, to the Asian continent and the African continent largely, also to other continents. So this is another focus area. Uh, so, 190 billion dollars we feel can be achieved like this, in this manner. Uh, if you go back a little, you'll remember that there was a, a disability study uh, conducted by us, uh, which uh, spelled out how uh, our disabilities of our infrastructure and other things compare with China and Vietnam. And uh, we feel with the significant improvements in infrastructure, which are happening, a part of the disability will be taken care of, the cost will be better, the cost will be better. Uh, but 
some of them will still remain. Yeah. So this is an attempt to, uh, you know, bridge those disabilities. So it's a, it's a fantastic idea and uh, I take your point. Uh, the idea is to also bridge, keeping I, I in take mind your point, that the idea is the, to bridge the disability. Yeah. So if I could interrupt you there, if I could interrupt you there, I take your point that is to bridge the disabilities. It yeah. was also recently that India lost sure. its case at the WTO. It needs to be WTO compliant when it comes to incentivizing uh, manufacturing yeah. linked to exports, and which is why you're now seeing the government perhaps looking to dish out incentives based on production, large-scale production. What I want to ask you, Mr. Mohindru, is, and this is source-based information that uh, we've picked up here at ET now, that when you look at the new electronic policy, which is going to give um, the maximum thrust to mobiles that cost more than $200, there will be perhaps only five beneficiaries. The total incentive over five years will be 35,000 crores, which will mean about 84% of the expected share of the total incentive. Does this make sense? And what does this mean for the layman who is in the yes, market see, for an uh, first iPhone of all, or uh, a Galaxy or a Xiaomi or a OnePlus? No, Nayantara, India has always been WTO compliant. Uh, and uh, the case uh, which you are talking about, we are going to uh, fight that case in the WTO appellate. And uh, I think India has a stellar record of uh, being extremely compliant with uh, global treaties and global agreements. So, uh, uh, I mean, uh, are, you, are you hinting that or suggesting that uh, this policy is to circumvent uh, the WTO? No, it is not. It is a genuine uh, uh, attempt to achieve global leadership uh, and uh, serve the domestic market by improving uh, our competitiveness. Uh, so let's put this aside. Now look at uh, the market, the global market. The global market has consolidated. Uh, about 83 to 85 percent of the global value is essentially with a few companies. So obviously we will not be able to create, uh, you know, the global market in a way that we want to, uh, you know, visualize or fantasize or imagine. The global market, the players are as they are. So we have to, and it is a very easy thing for India that you don't have to build these export markets. These export markets already exist. And if we become more competitive and we are able to provide sweeteners, this manufacturing uh, could perhaps move from China and Vietnam uh, to India or probably you know, the, yeah. uh, what is moving out of China will uh, move to India instead of to Vietnam and other countries. Uh, but look at the focus on fact, domestic Mohindra, Indian if champion in companies. That point, if I could there come is in on that clearly point, Mohindra, a very strong... You know, we actually talk, when we talk, about, when we talk about personal finance, for example, we talk about hedging our portfolios, right? Uh, you shouldn't have too much exposure to only real estate or to bonds or to equities yes. or to gold. I, I, you may find me insensitive yes. when I say yes. this, but in the last couple yes. of days, yes. with the outbreak of the coronavirus, it has yes. come to, it has come home, to, and people have realized that perhaps there is too much emphasis and too much uh, exposure to China. And now more than ever, while I'm not saying this is the intention, now more than ever, India must, must make a pitch to take some of these factories away from China. I'm sure a lot of the global giants will be wanting to reduce their exposure, not just because of the trade war, but because of what's happening right now because of the coronavirus. My simple question to you is that at a time when we are increasing import duties, talking about make in India, how crucial will the Will this particular policy be to make sure we get the Foxconns, we get all the other global factories, Samsung uh, expands, LG expands, all of that happens? No, no, we are, uh, Antara, let's not look at it like that. Uh, you know, we are extremely pained by the trouble uh, our neighbor is going through and uh, with uh, such a large presence of uh, the Chinese components and companies here, our heart goes out to them and we pray that everything gets fine and uh, China comes back to normal. And uh, uh, creating competitiveness is something very long term. It cannot be because of one incident or something which has happened. Uh, manufacturing does not shift like that. 
manufacturing shifts when people appreciate and understand that uh, India is in for the long haul and it is extremely serious. Uh, the the uh, grand persona of the Honorable Prime Minister, of course, uh, backs uh, this uh, very aggressively. So there is uh, a lot of uh, belief and uh, conviction in global companies that, uh, you know, the leadership will make it happen. But we have to walk the talk. And uh, the state governments, the central government, it's not only the package, it's a whole 360 of various things which have to be put together. Uh, so let us look at it like that. And uh, you see, it's not only China we are competing with, we are competing with Vietnam, we are competing with Indonesia. And it's, it's a battle of the nations, uh, which cannot be won by just you know, an incident happening somewhere uh, which uh, we should feel uh, happy about. We are extremely pained about it, actually. Say that. I said right now, the realization has come Hello? starting with the trade war, the, like how we all hedge our portfolios. We need to hedge our manufacturing facilities as well. So my next question to you is that when we've been seeing Narendra Modi and his top team uh, travel the world, making a pitch for making India ease of doing business, how crucial is this policy really going to be? Because what uh, India also needs to become a $5 trillion economy is to not just be an assembly line. No. Uh, you see, there are two uh, pillars to this. Uh, one is the $110 billion export uh, aspiration, and the other is the $80 billion domestic market. Now, the domestic market uh, is... We are uh, projecting that the domestic market will go up from 2 lakh crores to about 6 lakh crores. This is a three times growth in five years. Now, this usually doesn't happen. Uh, this, this is approximately, uh, you know, we'll be consuming 1.6% of the GDP of the country if we are able to consume $80 billion worth of smartphones. Now, our hypothesis is that it is because we'll consume so many smartphones and we'll have smart networks and the digital economy will flourish uh, very profoundly that India will generate $5 trillion of uh, GDP. It's not because the GDP will be $5 trillion you will consume so much. I, I hope, uh, you know, this is very clear that the 5G networks, the robust uh, uh, digital infrastructure uh, and uh, a very aggressive uh, pricing and great feature-rich uh, uh, local languages assisted smartphones is what will drive the digital infrastructure. So these are two, uh, it's a, it's a double barrel uh, situation uh, that we will be going in uh, with these two strategies. Uh, so it's not only that, you know, this incentive package will be able to uh, promote exports and promote the manufacturing industry. A whole lot of other factors uh, will have to come in. And uh, that is going to be, of course, a holistic policy that we will see, and also the contribution uh, by the private sector to ensure just that uh, competitiveness uh, in being a manufacturing hub, creating employment, uh, earning foreign exchange too. With that, uh, Mr. Mohindu, thank you so much uh, for taking the time out this Friday and joining us here live on this edition of the India Development Debate. Thank you, Anandu. Let's get you the latest.